Hey everybody, Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. Today, I want to talk about how to learn tunes, how to learn songs that we're going to improvise over. I've heard back from so many of you, probably the most requested topic is how to learn tunes, how to internalize them, and how do I practice tunes? And a lot of people were saying, well, you know, I know, you know, Jeff, you've been doing this 30 years, you're a pro, I'm sure you do it totally differently, but what would you recommend for me, an adult amateur beginner? Um, now, my answer is the same. We're gonna do the same thing. The way I practice tunes is the way I teach tunes. I don't practice differently than I teach. So the way I work on songs, and by the way, I've got a fantastic story about how Michael Brecker practices, and this is different than uh, the other story I told on a previous video, um, how I do it, how I want you to do it, and finding out that that's kind of how Michael Brecker does it. So if you've watched any of these uh, Digging Deeper videos, you know that I'm all about chord tones, and that's the long and short of it. I want you to be able to arpeggiate the chord tones through a tune. Now here's an interesting thing. Um, video number 49, I believe I was talking about minor 251s. And in it, talking about the song um, Autumn Leaves, and what I did is I improvised a solo and my goal was to use chord tones because that song's made of major 251s and minor 251s. By the way, if this is sound like Greek to you, head back to that video. What I did is played a chorus improvising with like 98% chord tones to sort of make my point about getting the sound of minor 251s, very specific to that, uh, that topic. Here's the thing, about two days later, uh, one of you fantastic adult amateur folks who's out there, semi-pros, guy named Florian uh, overseas, I think maybe, uh, maybe Denmark, I'm not sure, transcribed the solo that I did and sent it back to me because when he heard it, he was, I think, surprised at how dang good it can sound playing with just chord tones. And he very kindly sent it back to me in all the transpositions. So that's something I wanna provide you folks with today. Uh, Florian, thank you so much for doing that transcription. Now he pointed out that yes, I used, you know, the vast, vast, vast majority of chord tones, one, three, five, seven, and I used some ninths in there. I consider those chord tones when I'm improvising. He pointed out, of course, there was good phrasing, there was motivic development, there was rhythmic interest, there was a good tone, there were all these things aside from just playing chord tones. Of course, that's all part and parcel with it. But the point is, the solo, he thought, sounded pretty good. And, you know, again, not an award-winning solo or anything like that, but uh, it serves the point. So what I'm gonna do is just edit it from the last video, play it for you right now, and uh, you can watch and hear what's going on. And Florian very kindly offered to provide this transcription. So if this is helpful for anybody, uh, we would love to send it to you. It's in all three keys. It's in C concert, it's in bass clef, it's in B flat, if you play trumpet or saxophone or clarinet or whatever, E flat for alto and baritone. So again, thank you so much Florian for doing the work and for providing this for all the other great players out there. So here it is, this is Autumn Leaves, a chord tone solo that I improvised about a month or two back. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that makes sense. And seeing it go by and hearing how good some of that stuff can sound. Uh, and the building blocks are so simple. Chord tones, one, three, five, seven, some ninths in there. That's the point. Now, 
so many of, of you folks are writing me and I've heard this story numerous times. Folks who are excited about playing music and, you know, thrilled that they're getting some good input and everything, but they feel bad that they, you know, they wish they would have started this 20 years ago or, you know, their life took a different path and they didn't get to go to music school and they feel like, you know, that ship has sailed and, oh, well, I guess I'll never learn at that level. No. These videos, my challenge to myself is to give you folks the education that I got at the University of North Texas and some other schools. And some of the great workshops I've attended with fantastic, some of the most famous players in the world. And I want to provide you with that information. Now, of course, the experience is different. Hearing Dave Holland, the bass player I got to work with a little bit, explain a concept and yeah, hearing it from me. It's different. I get it. But the information and learning how to apply it. That's what I'm trying to do here with Digging Deeper and with Jazzwire coming up September 1st, 2018. Jazzwire is gonna be the real deal. So for those of you that think maybe you missed the boat, it's too late, none of that is true. That's why I'm here. So I hope you'll stay along for the ride. So what I wanna to talk to you about now is this Michael Brecker story. So you've heard that I practice with chord tones. Every song I'm learning, the music that I'm learning for Maryland Summer Jazz this summer. In a month, I'm teaching Maryland Summer Jazz. 14 different songs, a lot of which I don't know. Today, that's what I was doing, is arpeggiating simply through these tunes, not improvising, playing root position arpeggios. That's what I want you to do. That's what I was doing today. Here's the story. A friend of mine, fantastic piano player, conductor of orchestras, great educator, we've worked together a million times. He was on a gig, I can't remember what festival, it was some festival somewhere or other, and he and Michael Brecker essentially arrived at the hotel at the same time. They weren't playing together, but wow, he's checking in by Michael Brecker. And so that was kind of cool. Turns out uh, they, they, they were both exhausted from flying in from wherever. Brecker probably came in from Japan or somewhere like that. And my friend was just excited to get like four or five hour nap in before going and playing that evening. And Brecker had a similar schedule. Uh, so they talked a little bit in the elevator or whatever. So my friend goes to the room and he goes to lay down. And so what does he hear uh, about five minutes later is Michael Brecker takes his horn out and starts practicing. So my friend thought that's interesting because he knew that Brecker was pretty wiped out from traveling. But no, he got his horn out. He didn't relax. He didn't turn on the TV. He got his horn out. And the way I remember the story is he was going to be guest soloing with uh, a high, not a high school, but a college big band that night. And they were playing a lot of songs that, that Fred sort of knew and Brecker certainly knew. But here's the thing. For the next two or three hours, Fred did not go to sleep. My friend's name's Fred. He told me he got out of bed, first of all, feeling bad, like, damn, Michael, I was going to take a nap. Michael Brecker's practicing. He was practicing simple tunes, and Fred heard him through the hotel wall practice. And what he did is arpeggiated root position seventh chords to begin with and went through the song in time. And then he went and expanded it. I think he went up to ninth chords in time through that form. Then he went and did altered ninth chords. And then he did starting from the ninth down to the root and just worked and worked and worked. And my friend was saying, these were songs that in any universe, Michael Brecker did not need to practice. Fred could tell what these songs were. He knew what these tunes were. And he would have taken a nap. What an amazing story. First of all, the work ethic, the uh, professionalism, Michael Brecker could have phoned in his worst day of playing and it would have been ridiculously great. But no, he worked his ass off to solo with that college band. He did that, of course, for his audience, but he did that for himself. He loves this music, he wants to do it right. But it was so interesting that he started at the beginning, so far lower than most of you would think to start, than most of my friends would think to start. Root position arpeggios. That is the deal. That's how I practice. That's how Michael Brecker practiced. That's how many pros practice. They go back to basics every day, every day. So that's what I'd suggest for you. So to put a very fine point on it, if we're gonna work on autumn leaves, what I want you to do is play one, three, five, seven. There's, if we're calling seventh 
chords. There's four chord tones, the one, the three, the five, the seven. Forget ninths for now. One, three, five, seven. There also happen to be four beats in a measure. So the first four uh, measures of autumn leaves, you would arpeggiate one, three, five, seven on each chord. was it. And if that's where you need to start, I didn't do that in time. I played one chord and maybe I had to think of what the next chord was. Maybe I had to get my wits together about what the fingerings were, wherever you're at on your instrument. But now what we want to do is get that in time, like this. <laughs> So there was no improvising there whatsoever. All I was doing was playing the chord tones. So I had essentially a template that created an etude for me, one, three, five, seven. There was zero improvising there. Do that until you can do it perfectly. In time, there's no little mental blips and blurps, right? There's no little finger issues going on. You can nail that and then start improvising with just those chord tones to begin with. That tells you you know the structure of the tune. For those of you that get lost, I have so many students come to me and for two or three years, or five years, or 10 years, folks have been playing and just getting lost. They can't get past the sixth measure of the tune, they're lost. This fixes that. If you're getting lost in the changes, if you have to check in on every measure proving you know where you're at, it's very easy to find off where things find out where things get haywire, right? So this is really one of one of the great exercises. So chord tones. It's not any more difficult than that, although you'll find out it's uh, more difficult than you may think. And this expands from there. The wonderful thing at Jazzwire is we'll be checking in with you. We'll be talking to you. We'll be going back and forth, having discussions. You'll ask questions. We'll answer questions. You'll have assignments that last for a week or two. And we will really, really get this stuff moving and expand the ideas. So I hope we'll see you there. I love that you're tuning into Digging Deeper. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and please leave comments. I always wanna know how this is working for you. If you have another way that you achieve similar results. I always wanna know that stuff. There's a lot of ways to get this stuff done, but I know after 30 years, all these approaches work. I'm happy to share them with you. Thanks so much. Take care, see you next time. Thank you.